weasel walks into a bar. The bartender says, wow, I've never served a weasel before. What can I get you? Pop goes the weasel. Hey there, welcome back to the vlog. So this vlog entry was the result of a conversation that I had the other night with somebody. It's not about exploding weasels, but we will get to the other exploding things in a second. Most people have heard of Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared. Arguably, it's one of the 20th century's greatest achievements, but despite it being known as a famous equation, very few people actually understand it. I didn't personally understand it until I was in my mid-30s and I still remember the minutes after the penny finally dropped. I was in a Starbucks reading a book on the subject when it finally clicked. As I looked at my surroundings with this sudden realisation of what the consequences are, for me, I personally felt like the world had suddenly changed. The problem with the equation is even if you tell people that it explains how much energy is inside matter, or how much matter you'll get from a known amount of energy. After all, the equal sign means that you can pipe stuff from one side to the other. The two sides are equal. The numbers used are so big that it doesn't really make sense at an everyday human scale. When the US dropped their atomic bomb on Hiroshima, this gave humans a new measure for comparison Telling everybody that something is equivalent to 30,000 tonnes of TNT means nothing to the average person. But saying it is two Hiroshima bombs gives the average person at least some tangible grasp of the idea of scales that you're talking about. Now to put a precise figure on the energy in the Hiroshima bomb, we can say it's about 65 terajoules, give or take a small margin of plus or minus two terajoules. Uppercase TJ is terajoules, however, we're back to the problem 65 terajoules means nothing to the average person. However, on February the 28th, 1954, the US detonated its largest ever nuclear weapon over at Bikini Atoll in the Pacific as part of Operation Castle. The Castle Bravo test was expected to explode with an energy equivalent of about 5 million tonnes of TNT. Actually, it produced almost three times that explosive power, equivalent to 15 million tonnes of TNT. I'm not going to get into how they fouled up the calculations, as that's a whole bunch of complicated physics about isotopes which were used, and how they thought that it might react. But all you need to know is that the Castle Bravo blast was so huge and unexpected in scale that many of the instruments that were placed to measure this detonation got vaporised in the process. And many of the people nearby got accidentally irradiated and what was supposed to be a secret test quickly became an international incident when radiation fell as far as Europe, India, Australia, the USA and parts of Europe. detonation power is 63 petajoules, denoted as an uppercase PJ, or about 1,000 times bigger than Hiroshima. Put another way, so we have an apples to apples comparison of numbers, it was 63,000 terajoules. I have something here in my home, which I'm about to show you, which has about the same amount of energy inside as that Castle Bravo blast. This is partially used maple syrup and the bottle which it sits in, which comes in just shy of 63,000 terajoules of the Castle Bravo test. Whilst this maple syrup contains the energy equivalence of the blast from that test, there is a reason humans don't use plastic bottles of half-eaten maple syrup as their major nuclear deterrent. <laughs> in layman's terms, 
We're really bad at fusion or fission with most sources of fuel. As such, we rely on the things that we know we can use to some extent, and even then, we're actually still terrible at it. Two years after the Castle Bravo, the Department of Defense disclosed that the thermonuclear devices with efficiencies ranging from 15% to up to around 40% had been tested. My math is working at 100% efficiency, so I guess if I throw a pile of pancakes on my maple syrup, then the equation and the assumption we make, we can block about a third of it, and we will match what the Department of Defense was doing. So how do we know that 700 grams of maple syrup has the equivalent energy of Castle Bravo? Well, we plug the numbers back into the equals mc squared equation, where we can use the real numbers so we can see the real answer. I've put a spreadsheet online, which you can play with the math, and the link is down in the description below. Just change the mass, and it's going to take the speed of light squared, and multiply that by the mass that you supply to arrive at the energy in joules. We then convert that back to terajoules. Finally, we convert that back to Hiroshima, so you have an approximate comparison that makes sense to the average person. Then, just to showcase how ridiculously large the Russian's 21,000 terajoule SAR bomber was, I've put in a second comparison. As you can see, there's some big numbers in the spreadsheet. So I've had to make some of the numbers use scientific notation, just so that we can see the numbers properly. So to bring this round full circle to a conclusion, when you realise how much energy is in stuff around you, and what the equation is telling us, it's actually quite awesome. In the original meaning of truly damn terrifying. If you like these vlogs, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, thumbs down. If you want to see more, please hit subscribe, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Oh, I so nearly got that in one take. So nearly in one take. Oh. I'm an amateur. <laughs>